Of the five main breeds of draft horses that can be found in the United States, the Percheron stands above the others as the most versatile and certainly the best suited to the demands, the desires, and even the dreams of any heavy horse enthusiast. A ton of fun can be had with a modestly priced team or even a single horse. As you'll see in this program, a nice team can even help you earn a living. Hi, I'm Dina Kirby. I own All Seasons Carriage Company. We're located in Lodi in California. And we're a special events carriage company. We do primarily uh, special events, weddings, funerals, corporate events, family reunions, anything that we can do horse drawn. Today we're doing a wine tour, uh, as we do here in the Northern California area. We take the carriage with the horses and the guests out into the vineyard and talk about the vines and the growing season, what's happening at that time of the year. Uh, we get information from the winemaker and the vineyard manager that we can pass along to the guests. And then we stop and do some tasting out in the field. We uh, normally stop right at the grapes where the wine that they're going to taste was taken from. Okay, this is our little tasting stop here. country? Yes, and I love it. And then we take them up and conclude with either a wine tasting or um, a luncheon, a food and wine pairing. Uh, the other format that we do we'll, is we go uh, winery hopping, so to speak, and we go from winery tasting room to tasting room, three or four wineries. Uh, our tours are four to five hours long and on the uh, progressive wine tours where we go from one winery to the other we provide a catered lunch somewhere along the way and then uh, of course everyone goes into the tasting room spends as much time as they'd like we don't keep them on any kind of a time schedule uh, and they're a lot of fun we have uh, this carriage that we use for small groups of four or five people and then we have a large wagon that we use for uh, wine tours as well and I call that one the instant party and you don't have to clean the house when you're done. <laughs> You guys having a good time? Excellent. <laughs> cool. We use Percheron horses exclusively for the work that we do uh, in all the different formats that we have. Uh, and I've chosen the Percheron because, for several reasons. I just, I like their temperament, I like their personality. All the draft breeds are really great to work with. But I just um, kind of landed on the Percheron because they seem to have a little more life and a little more uh, go. And I didn't want to deal with all those feathers that the other breeds have. <laughs> So that was part of it too. Um, we have some background noise right now that you'll see that the horses are, are responding to. Um, they're washing out some big, uh, some of the big uh, fermentation vats right now. And uh, so that's just kind of a sample of the things that go on and the things that uh, these horses need to accustom themselves to. A forklift just went by. So there's always something going on in these wineries. Uh, but these horses are just so phenomenal. They tolerate it very well and we just have a good time exposing them to all of these different stimuli. We also like to use just black or white horses because for so many of the events that we do, uh, the black and the white I feel is more formal. So we do funerals and we do weddings and so the black or the white horses just uh, really fit in well. So come visit us in California if you're not already here and we'll take you out on a horse-drawn wine tour. Thank you. I'm Michael Muir. I'm the past president of United States Driving for the Disabled, and I'm founder of a regional program called Access Adventure, which provides outdoor recreation and therapy for people with disabilities using a unique kind of partnership with horses. We use a solar-powered, battery-operated wheelchair lift 
to bring aboard people with disabilities. Whether they're in a wheelchair or not, some people just have difficulty climbing onto a wagon. So it works like an elevator to bring people up on board the wagon. Today, we rely on a team of Percheron horses that came out of the Waverly Sale. Their names are Jack and Jake. I was specifically drawn to Percheron horses for their, their trainability, their beauty. I like their animation. And I just found that they were the draft horse that spoke to me the most. Robert and Randy Boardman are two of our stalwart volunteers that have been with us since the very beginning, since we founded Access Adventure in 2006. They really enjoy Jack and Jake. They've taken this pair under their wing. And we not only utilize this team to provide outdoor recreation and therapy for disabled people, but uh, Robert and Randy enjoy competing with them in everything from scurries to pleasure classes. So we use these horses in speed events. We use these horses in the finely detailed and quiet work of disabled driving. They do everything we ask of them. They go fast when we want to go fast. They're light in our hands when we need them to be light. They stand quietly when they need to stand. So Jack and Jake really represent the qualities that we like in a Percheron horse. They're not super fancy hitch horses. They're not as big as hitch horses. But to me, they're very handsome. They're very modern kind with a nice long neck and a trim appearance, good muscularity, the ability to uh, be quiet when you need them to be quiet, but when we ask, put our pedal to the metal and ask for some gas, they can really go. And that's what separates the Percheron from the other draft horse breeds, in my opinion. All right. This is Lollipop. And what, what was Lollipop doing? She's our GPS. That's <laughs> a GPS. She's our GPS and tells us when we're missing a gate. I'm Stuart Schroeder. I live near Santa Rosa, California. This is my team of gray Percherons. Ben, his seven-year-old gelding, and Bonnie, the nine-year-old mare. And uh, this is my team. We're uh, starting out with some work this spring. Uh, got them on a manure spreader here, and um, this morning I was driving around with the spreader empty because I wanted to uh, engage uh, the machine and get these guys kind of retuned to the uh, sound and the vibration and uh, so um, that's what that was about. I take a loop around my farm here with um, the feed engaged first and then um, everything was smooth and then I stopped and then I engaged the beaters and uh, of course those make a bit more sound and uh, a little more vibration and uh, just talked with my talking with my horses telling them they're good and they're listening to me, and then they don't really seem to be too concerned, but they, they can hear what's going on back here, so. So I, uh, I have both the team of horses and a little tractor, and I use, uh, I use both of them in their best capacities, and uh, I'm sure the horses appreciate it when I'm uh, doing my uh, heavy plowing and sod that hasn't been turned in 30 years I'm using the tractor and uh, then I can use the horses for the lighter jobs and um, today we're spreading the manure which is something they can easily do and uh, uh, it uh, means I don't have to hook and unhook the tractor I can just get on the tractor load it get off the tractor get on the spreader drive off with the team now we've got a manure spreader full of good composted horse manure and I'm um, gonna put that on our fields and disc it in this weekend.
horses. Time to go back and get another load. See how much more we got for this field. Through the winter, it's really wet and uh, muddy around here, so they just get to take the winter off. But um, now that spring is here, I'm going to do uh, quite a few small farm jobs with them, including spreading manure and uh, picking up hay, raking some hay. Um, uh, I do a little logging in the summer, and um, I pepper that with some carriage work and uh, weddings or uh, corporate events and uh, whatnot like that. I started doing this uh, full time in 82. Before that, it was in 1970 when we started coming down here part time. So I've got probably uh, 35, 40 years down here working the horses. We do school groups this time of year and we do anything from uh, just taking them a 10 minute ride around Old Town to uh, our ride out to Sutter's Fort. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we go to Sutter's Fort. We take a group of ELP kids. That's a living history program. And they go out and they stay at, the, at Sutter's Fort for a night. That's when they live like pioneers. Yeah, the thing I like about the, the Pertrons are they're very dependable. They're, uh, they're pretty stout horses. They're always willing to go. So I have, I have a great love and joy for them. You need horses that are solid, that'll take the kids walking all around them, petting them every place. Well, we do a variety of things with them. Uh, ride, drive, show. <laughs> Commercials, movies, whatever we're called upon to do with them, we do. They're very good horses, and they've lasted us a very long time. I have a couple of oldies that are pushing 30. I don't use them down here anymore. We retire them out of here about 25 years old, and we don't start them down here until they're three-year-olds. And they are now five, four, and five-year-olds. And I've been working them uh, just about a year now. I got them last March. And they're doing, they're doing quite well. I split them up first. I don't bring them right in as a team. So I'll split them up and I'll work them for a while with an experienced horse. And then after one's more comfortable, they end up getting put together. And these guys have been together for uh, probably about five or six months now. During the Christmas season, we use these horses to do uh, light rides. We do uh, rides through the fabulous 40s. It's an older neighborhood in the Sacramento district and uh, they light up their houses very uh, elaborately. And I stay busy with that from uh, latter part of November, just right after uh, Thanksgiving, all the way till New Year's. Last September, I use that gray team to my right, but each one of them, two years in a row, I used in the log skidding, and uh, I won the log skidding with, with both of those horses. I have another gilding that I work with them, and they've done very well. They're always pretty calm. Um, Actually, it, sometimes it amazes me. <laughs> you can see the buses can get pretty close to them. I was, I was. <laughs> These guys are getting pretty good about it. First couple of buses that went by them, they, they kind of perked up. So, Bertrands have gotten to be a, a major, major staple in my line.
Tell us a little bit, little bit about your horse, Colleen. Well, my horse's name is Tucker. He's a nine-year-old. He was born in Missouri, and I got him when he was not quite two yet. He does Jim Canna. We have won several um, silver belt buckles. And he is, um, he's been on the beach. He rides the mountains. He'll do parades. He will ride with groups. We, um, he'll ride single. Um, he likes trails. He doesn't mind um, gunshots. We've done mounted shooting a couple times. So he's pretty easy. He's 17-1, um, he weighs 2,000 pounds. And I did have to buy a draft saddle for him. And uh, I had a custom-made bridle because he was kind of in between the big guys and the little guys. He was born black and turned when he was about five or six. And now he's flea bitten gray and he's on white mane and tail. And his tail drags on the floor, so he's very pretty. Heather Farms in Walnut Creek is hosting a fundraiser to to uh, save the Heather Farms Equestrian Center from development in the city of Walnut Creek. We're trying to show that this equestrian center has value for city kids and specifically the mission of Access Adventure is to connect people with the healing power of nature, people that by nature of their disability are isolated from the outside world and from outdoor recreation. So Access Adventure is happy to promote the idea that horses have a place in downtown Walnut Creek, that we can provide a connection for Welcome. people who don't get outdoors, put the lines in their hand, get the wind in their face in a, in a wheelchair accessible carriage, and take them into the great outdoors right in the middle of the city of Walnut Creek. Percheron is a really versatile horse. They really uh, have a well, they, they're a well-minded horse overall. They're really a strong horse and really an elegant horse. So you can use it as a single, you can have a pair, you can have a unicorn, you can have a four, you can have a six, or you can have, you can have an eight. If It just all depends on what, uh, what you might like. They were originally, the, the Pertrans were a lot shorter of a horse and were used more for farming. Now we've bred them up to be a little bit taller, leggier horse. And so they're, they're really an, a, an elegant horse, more than probably most of the, the other breeds. They have become into uh, more of a sporty look to the Pertrans. They're not quite as drafty as they were in the earlier days. Uh, we have draft fest going on here today. And uh, so we have the Pertrin horses here behind me. They're, this is a unicorn, and uh, it's a little bit special because of the way that it's designed. It has the two horses in the back and the one out front, and makes it really difficult to drive. It was designed to use for, if the load got really heavy, they would put an extra horse in front to help pull out if the load was too heavy. So that was what it originally was designed for. Now we show them with the, in the hitch classes here, um, we have the nice wagon too, and it's more, we show more for recreational. We don't use it as much for uh, working anymore. What we want to see in these horses now is, we want to see a lot of heads up and a lot of action. And here we are in Napa, California today for the 4th of July parade with Jack and Jake. We're going to be driving our covered wagon for Vine Village. What do you think of Pertrans? Well, best horses in the world. These guys were so calm and collected during that parade, I wouldn't have wanted to drive any other team. Hey, how would you guys like the ride? Excellent. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. <laughs>
That's the thing I like about perch runs. They're, uh, they're very dependable, they're very patient. And that's probably why the majority of my horses are perch runs. So to me, if a person is on a budget and they're looking to get started in the draft horse world, or you, you've got a hankering to have a small farm business to do an organic garden, or say, thinking about a little commercial carriage work, you're looking for a good solid team of horses, I'd go shopping for a team of perch runs because they won't let you down. They've got a good foot, they're sound, they're reliable, they're everything you want in a nice, nice draft horse. I first got started in perch runs when I was uh, in my 20s and uh, I didn't really have a breed preference but when I saw the gray perch runs I knew that's what I wanted and uh, that's what I got. I've been very happy with them. To learn more about this remarkable breed of horse, contact the Perch and Horse Association of America. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website, www.ruralheritage.com, to shop online.